In life, waiting can be tough. We want things instantly. But there is a special kind of waiting that believers are asked to do. Waiting on the Lord. But why? Well, it's like waiting for the best chef to finish cooking. You know the meal will be amazing. God has a perfect plan and waiting shows we trust him. It's like waiting for the sun to rise. It happens at the right time, bringing light. When we wait, we say, God, I trust your timing. Waiting helps us to grow. It's like waiting for a plant to bloom. It takes time, but the result is beautiful. When we wait on the Lord, our faith, patience, and strength grow. Waiting also stops us from making silly choices. Imagine rushing to eat the food before it is completely cooked. It's not going to taste good. Waiting prevents us from grabbing things too soon, helping us make wise decisions. Waiting on the Lord brings peace. It's like waiting for a storm to pass. Eventually, the sky clears. God's timing brings peace and calmness, even in difficult times. Moreover, Waiting makes us humble. It's like waiting for a friend. We realize we can't do everything alone. Waiting on the Lord humbles us, recognizing we need his guidance. Isaiah 40 verses 29 to 31 encourages us. It says, He gives power to the faint. And to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. When we wait on the Lord, we stand still. But we are not just passive in our waiting. We are waiting with an expectation, believing in the promises and the words of the Lord. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1 continues to say, For everything there is a season. And a time for every matter under heaven. Just exercise a little more patience when waiting on the Lord. His time may not be your time, but His time is always the best time. When we wait on the Lord, it also allows us to mature spiritually. Romans 5 verses 3 and 4 highlights that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope. And so when we live in a state of hope, believing that whatever the Lord says, he will do. You will realize how when situations come your way, it becomes less stressful, le less anxiety because you have all confidence in the God that you serve, knowing that he is a God who takes care of his children. And if I'm in a situation and it is not working out immediately, it means that God is teaching me something. Sometimes he allows us to remain in situations so we can mature, so we can grow, so our faith in him can grow, our confidence in him can grow. And so you're encouraged today, stand still, 
remain calm, trust in his words, he is faithful and he is true. Because the Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him, continue to seek the Lord, continue to fast, continue to pray, go about your business, do all that you have to do, let, do not let the things of this world stress you, it is a natural thing for us as believers to waver at times, but as children of God we are encouraged not to waver. Sometimes we say when we're on the mountain, things seem so easy and it's so hard when we're down in the valley. But what we need to remember is that the same God that is on the mountain is the same God that is in the valley when you're going through your valley experience. So in your valley, wait on the Lord. Daniel, he was cast in the lion's den, but he waited on the Lord and the Lord shut the mouth of the lions. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were cast into, into the fire, but what did they do? They remained there trusting in the Lord that even if he does not deliver them, they will not bow. And this is the attitude we need to develop as believers of God. Amen. In the story of Abraham and Sarah, God promised them a son, but as years passed by, Sarah remained barren. Now instead of waiting, they decided to take matters in their own hands, and Sarah suggested that Abraham have a child with her maidservant, Hagar, and this led to the birth of Ishmael, who was not the promised child. As a result of Sarah's decision, to go ahead of God to choose Hagar for Abraham. We see where Ishmael, well, after Isaac was born, Ishmael was there mocking him. So obviously there were discomfort in the home. And so Sarah decided that Hagar could not stay here any longer. And these are some of the things that happen to us when we do not wait on God's timing. On the, uh, on the other hand, we see Isaac. Isaac married Rebecca, and Rebecca was barren. And what did Isaac do? He went to the Lord in prayer, and he waited for 20 years before Rebecca was able to reproduce. And so as I mentioned earlier, waiting is not passive. When you wait, you wait with expectation, going about your usual business, allowing the Lord to work out whatever he wants to work out in his time. And we see in the story of Joshua, right? When the children of Israel, they were instructed by God to march around the wall of Jericho. They were waiting on the Lord to give them victory over Jericho. But while they were waiting, God was giving them some instruction right for six days with seven priests carrying trumpets of ram's horns they were supposed to walk around the wall of jericho and on the seventh day they circled the city seven times and at the sound of a long trumpet blast the people shouted now what was the result of this because they followed god's plan the walls of jericho miraculously collapsed allowing the israelites to conquer the city so we see here, when we are waiting on the Lord, we should wait with expectation, obeying his commands as we go from day to day. And what this story does, it highlights the power of trusting in the Lord's guidance. Even when his instructions seem weird or stupid, the patience and obedience of the Israelites ultimately led to the fulfillment of God's promise and the victory over Jericho. What is it in your life that you need victory over? What is it in your life that seems to be holding you back? Just give it to the Lord. Leave it at his feet. He will take care of it. In the quiet moments of waiting on the Lord, we can see the beauty of this life even in the midst of chaos and as we wait 
we discover the joy of surrender and the profound beauty of God's timing. In the stillness, we glimpse a beauty that goes beyond our understanding, reminding us that waiting is not merely a delay, but a sacred journey towards something extraordinary. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. God bless you.